slightly, no, very sleep deprived. Um, always wanting when, wondering when my next coffee is going to come. <laughs> wondering where my rest day is. I am Mrs. Ness um, and Henrik's mum. I'm a registered psychologist. I've worked a lot in organisational psychology. And I'm someone that just likes to give life a really good crack. I got into triathlon in kind of a weird way. I was on a horse for 20 years. I was never a runner, um, never really ridden a bike besides one as a kid to go to the milk bar. Um, and I used to swim as a kid but chose the horses. So I was at the AIS 2008 off horse camp and was in the pool and someone said, oh, triathlon's coming into Rio. Um, 2016, I'm like, yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> I'll stick to my horses and then somehow through like a lot of changes in my life, so I'm not the best, but um, I'd always admired triathletes and I just wanted to feel better mentally and physically. So I started at the real grassroots and went from try, try, and it just sort of developed from there and it was all about the passion for the sport. I took from what I knew about high performance sport in that it's all about learning and being around people that you can learn from. So I knew that I didn't know the skill or necessarily had the fitness of triathlon, but I knew what tools it took mentally um, to, to learn and to, to be in a high performance environment. So then I applied the, the tools mentally um, and put myself in a position where I felt like I was almost going back to school. So I surrounded myself with people that knew what they were doing um, and just learned and absorbed and took every opportunity I could to become a better athlete um, and then essentially, you know, a better triathlete each day and it just grew from there. And I did do, <laughs> I was doing like a squad training day just with a, um, a local tri club and um, I really wanted to do this tri tri and also because I'd been told that um, uh, the para triathlon was going to be debuting in Rio this was like just a bit under two years out, so I was like, you know, oh yeah, why not, let's have a goal, let's go, go to the Paralympics. But I'd also missed out on the Paralympics like twice before an equestrian, so it was still this burning desire of mine to go. Um, and I was swimming and I said, oh, to this, this guy, I'm like, I really want to go to, um, to the Paralympics. And I'm like, you know, triathlon might be my go. And he said, didn't you just say you were going to do try, try? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, try, try to the Paralympics, that is really far-fetched. And I'm like, all right, sweet, game on. Um, so my goals in triathlon, I guess, since I started in uh, late uh, 2015, sorry, early 2015 were just to learn about the sport initially and what it entailed, learn how to ride a bike, learn how to run, um, and go back to learning how to, to swim well. So it was really basic at the start. And just also to challenge myself and to learn how I could be a better, a better athlete. Um, but from that became meaning a better person in the sense about you know the dedication and commitment that was required. The first world champs I had like probably a massive highlight it was 2015 in Chicago. Chicago is awesome. Um, and it was just such a highlight because I hadn't really, I didn't know where I was at or how I would really compete against the other girls at that point. I'd done quite a bit of training that year and then came out and then um, was on the podium, so I finished third. So that was a, such a, a thrill and a highlight. From there, it was to work towards qualifying for um, the Rio Paralympics, and I did that. So the last race we had um, in Penrith for qualifying, um, I won and um, that was also a pretty, pretty amazing day out there and um, crossing that line, like it was pretty exciting to know I'd finally qualified for the Games, which had been a long time in the making. And there's probably several other highlights, like just getting through some of Danielle's training sets and, you know, making it to training some days and getting out of bed, <laughs> all those small wins. Plans this year, so, um, Tokyo like, is not far away. It's actually probably 199 days today till Tokyo Paralympic Games start. So in, in, like, in reality, that's not a long time in sport really. So it's really um, making the most of each session. And I think 
that's where the benefit of being in, in the squad I'm in is so good because I have a coach that understands that life isn't always that straightforward, especially with a baby. Um, and my teammates are really good because they push me, but also we have a bit of banter as well. So um, I'm super excited to be back in my team environment after having a year um, almost away from them last season. Um, goals is just to make sure I go out there and peel back so many layers of myself physically and mentally to know that every race um, towards Tokyo and come Tokyo that I have figured out everything and applied everything I can possible of who I am physically and mentally to just make sure I am giving every race um, again a really good crack but knowing I'm leaving everything out there and, and finish the season with no regrets. Mm, this is the hard one. Um, I, I feel I am driven um, and in, like, and I'm determined just to figure out who I am along the way and triathlon is an amazing sport for that because you constantly are challenged both physically and mentally and I think that's such an amazing element um, of the sport. That's probably a few words but let's find out one more. I'm probably, I'm stubborn, yes. We'll go with stubborn. Yep. That's it. <laughs> Wait, you said driven and stubborn, didn't you? Oh, no, didn't I say? Okay, let's just, shh, one more. Driven, inspired, and tired. Can, we, like, can I use tired? Does that, does that describe me? Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Again, it's about who you work with as well. So people that are passionate about triathlon, but women in sport as well. And I believe that if you have a good team around you, then the journey is so much more exciting. Prior to this, when I first started out in triathlon, um, Liv wasn't around then. So, but my first ever bike before even I got a triathlon bike was a giant. And I still have that bike. I don't want to get rid of it. Um, it's pretty cool, we should have a look at it. Like it's probably a bit rusty now, but the gears and how it was done was pretty cool. Um, and my first ever triathlon bike um, was Giant. And I have so many fond memories. And it was actually quite hard to sell that bike because it had taken me so far in such a short time. And um, so yeah, it's about the people you work with and it's passionate about women in triathlon. And again, it's all about having fun along the way. And I believe that it's a really good fit Plus, my bike makes me want to get out of bed and ride. Like, have you seen that bike? I get so many compliments, and I'm like, oh, thanks. I feel like they're compl complimenting me, and it's like, I'll take that, I'll take that. I feel good. Who am I talking to? Sorry, keep going. <laughs> Pretend I'm there. Hi. Yeah, sorry. You actually say, oh, I want to get to Tokyo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would like to qualify for Tokyo. <laughs> that would be number one. <laughs> Loopers. Hi, I'm Steph from Wits Up. You might remember me from such things as writing about triathlon, talking about triathlon, or you might have seen me laying in the middle of the road just to try and get that perfect shot. But I'm hoping that most of all what you remember me from is trying to make a difference in the coverage and the quality content uh, when it concerns women in triathlon. So, I'm hoping you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button. I think it's a bell. Ding! Subscribe and share this with all of your fellow mad triathlon fans.